advanced financial accounting. In this presentation, we're going to talk about consolidation calculations for less than wholly owned subsidiaries. So we have a parent subsidiary relationship. We're going to be looking at the consolidation process to put the financial statements of the parents and the subsidiaries as if they are one entity, but we don't have a wholly owned subsidiary. In other words, the parent does not own 100% of the subsidiary. How do we do the consolidation in that case? Consolidation calculations, less than wholly owned subsidiaries, the entity's entire income and value must be reported per the current standards. So in other words, once again, we might think, well, on the income statement, maybe we would just report the part of the subsidiary that belongs to or is controlled by the parent. But that's not typically the case. That's not the case under generally accepted accounting principles. They want to see the entire thing on the subsidiary, which kind of makes sense. Uh, because you would say, hey, the, the parent company has control over the allocation of the assets and therefore they have control over kind of the performance to some degree, even though, again, upon liquidation, there would be the minority interest uh, for, for who has rights to, you know, the net assets. So in any case, the income statement then, we want to see the entire income statement uh, for the consolidation, including the major, minority and majority part of the subsidiaries. Subsidiaries' income will be divided between the controlling interest and, and the parent and the non-controlling interest for the shareholders. So we're going to have a similar type of situation we saw in the equity section of the balance sheet where we, we want to show the income, but then we also kind of want to show this non-controlling interest format within it. So how can we have kind of the best of both worlds? to show basically income and expenses fully consolidated, 100% consolidated, and then also show this non-controlling interest uh, for the, the non-controlling shareholders. Uh, subsidiaries net assets will be divided between the controlling interest and the non-controlling interest for the shareholders. The basic elimination entry is adjusted accordingly. So what we're gonna do, we started off thinking about the adjusting entry. Obviously, if you have a fully owned subsidiary, the elimination entries are gonna be easier because uh, then you have a fully owned subsidiary. So we would just do those elimination type of entries. Now we got to adjust the elimination entries to account for these non-controlling interests, meaning we're going to have these two new accounts that will be in place. One on the balance sheet in the equity section for the non-controlling interest and one on the income statement acting kind of like an expense. So this will make a lot more sense when we do actual... Uh, problems so when we work problems this will make more sense but this is just an example here of uh, an adjustment now note the this is a long adjusting entry we're not putting the debits on top and the credits on the bottom this is how i would think about constructing it as we will do in practice problems we have the parent company we have the subsidiary we have the consolidation adding the parent and subsidiary trial balances up once that is the case then as we saw in the past we would remove the investment in s so that's going to be eliminated we've got the uh the basically equity section for s that we're going to remove in other words the 183 the 148 the 36 so the 183 the 148 the 36 being removed here now these you might think well that's kind of um uh, strange because we should only be removing the proportion that is of s that is controlled by p so if p owns 90 percent of s in other words wouldn't we just remove the s's portion that would be the other way that you can kind of think about that and again this they're saying no we're gonna we're gonna basically consolidate uh the entire thing so how's that how's that gonna look well we're gonna remove the entire basically we're removing basically the equity section and then we're gonna show in one line item the non-controlling interest here so there's the non-controlling interest showing basically the minority interest in one line. So in any case, we remove those three. Then we have the inv the income in S. So notice that um, that here, this account needs to be removed. So that account needs to be removed. We could see down here the 94,500. 94,500 represented the net income, revenue minus expenses for S. Only a portion of that, the controlling interest, went to P that was reported here in the equity method that's got to be removed but it doesn't equal the amount of net income down here as it would if they were fully owned and using the equity method so so we're going to remove that and then the difference then is going to be these non-controlling interest accounts that we'll have to uh, be dealing with with these non-controlling interests we need two of them 
because we have the equity section kind of broken out here one in the equity section up top and then we've got you know the income statement uh down below so we're going to take the income which is going to be basically the proportional amount of the income so we'll take the net income here take the proportional amount for the non-controlling interest and that will go here notice it's posted acting kind of like an expense bringing basically down uh the net income and then we've got the non-controlling interest uh on the balance sheet non-controlling interest in the equity section so that basically represents kind of like in one line item the non-controlling interest kind of portion so we basically removed it up here and then put it kind of like that one line item representing the non-controlling interest again this will make a lot more sense when we go through the practice problems and actually kind of put this together uh, line by line in journal entries consolidated net income parents income from its operations plus the net income from each of the consolidated subsidiaries and uh, excluding any investment income from the consolidated subsidiary so in other words we're basically you know combining together the full net income in other words we're not just taking into consideration the non uh the the, the controlling portion in the consolidation we're basically saying that uh, the consolidated net income should be including you know in essence 100 percent uh of, of the so the parents net income in its operations plus net income from each of the subsidiaries and then we would exclude any any investment income from the consolidation subsidiaries like the elimination entry in situations where the subsidiary is wholly owned total consolidation net income accrues to the parent company or the controlling interest when one or more of the consolidated subsidiaries is not wholly owned which is obviously the, the case we're thinking here a portion of the consolidated net income accrues to non-controlling interest shareholders so that's when we have the more complicated situation where we have a non-controlling interest that we're going to be basically showing on the income statement income attributable to the subsidiaries non-controlling interest uh, will be deducted for consolidated net income on the income statement to get to consolidated net income attributable to the controlling interest so we saw that basically on the trial balance if we were to take a look at, at a financial statements here on the income statement these are very short just kind of basic financial statements but the bottom line here being it's like okay we've got the sales this is, includes sale this is, includes everything combined together 100 percent of the of the subsidiaries and the parent companies right because this is going to be a consolidated income statement and then we have the expenses including including again 100 percent of subsidiaries and the parent and then we have instead of net income down below we have the consolidated net income so here's going to be basically the consolidated net income you know adding up the, the income the net income in essence you can think of between parent and subsidiaries after removing any kind of elimination uh, entries that are necessary then we're going to account for this less the non-controlling to to s which is the subsidiary so this is the non-controlling interest it acts kind of like an expense in other words if you were to put this kind of like up here you know you get down to the net income it's going to be decreasing this uh consideration consolidated net income and then you're going to get to the bottom line here which is the consolidated net income to the controlling interest so basically you got the two line items you're going to say hey this is this is the performance up top this line represents how the company performed given the fact that p basically kind of has control over the net assets of the company right the assets minus liability even though they don't have uh you know the right like upon liquidation you could say to the non-controlling interest right they have kind of kind of control over it but in this is the performance the income statement how did they do over time and so you can kind of attribute it, that performance to how well p ultimately uh, allocated their resources net assets and then there's this one line item that says of those uh consolidated net income this is part of the net income that's not attributable part of the net income that is increasing the equity section representing assets minus liabilities that is not attributable to uh to the the controlling interest the parent so that means that on the on the balance sheet assets liabilities equity now we've got this non-controlling in uh interest here representing this component assets minus liabilities uh including total assets and liabilities for parent and subsidiaries showing that this is what basically p as the parent has control over ultimately and then this one line item showing what 
uh, they don't have claim to. And you can think about that basically in case of liquidation, of course, they wouldn't have claim to that 36200 This income statement showing how well the consolidated entity performed given the allocation of the net assets, which basically are in control of by the parent there, and then the portion of that net income that has been received, this one line item that would be allocated then to the subsidiary and then the statement of our retained earnings down below.